order. Ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Bruce Paulson. Ron Kinsley. Here. Don Pettit. Here. Tom Duffy. Here. Stacy Hessel. Here. Thank you. Let the record indicate we have a form. We have two people in person and we have two people virtual. Next item is our Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Thank you. Through the location of compliance, open meeting laws, please. The meeting has been noticed to the public and news media is required by section 19.84 of the Wisconsin statute. Thank you. Number five is the agenda. The agenda is set. Heard no ask for changes on it. Number six, public comment. Anybody have anything in public comment? Ms. Zilmer. Good morning. Linda Zilmer, 902 Holly Hill Lane, Birchwood, Wisconsin, Edgewater property owner. Um, first is uh, uh, maybe a request that during the finance director update, if there can be an explanation of the timing of when the 2021 audit report will be available and how that will work with the transition of the administrator and finance director roles. And then secondly, my public comment regarding today's uh, agenda item on request for ARPA funds. Because Sawyer County has not been able to develop guidelines yet, um, I hope some uh, applications that don't have broad public purpose are maybe put on hold until uh, specifications are developed to assist entities wanting to request these funds. I know during the uh, early pandemic times, as the state rolled out programs, there was a very active executive director with the Sawyer County LCO Economic Development Corporation. And in conjunction with a number of businesses, I think there was a lot of effort put into trying to uh, get aid and grants to get organizations through. And maybe that would be one of the specifications too, is before a, a request is made of county funds, that there is a explanation of what was done to try to mitigate losses during that time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Oman. What you got, my friend? He's here for the art Oh, okay. Thank you. Number seven, the minutes of the previous meeting, we have two meetings, one on March 10th and one on March 31st. I move you move Motion by Mr. Duffy. I'll second. Ms. Pettit. Thank you. Second by Ms. Pettit. Any further discussion? Very none. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Number eight, charges report. Our new treasurer, JD. Good Talk. morning. Good morning. Um, I have the uh, sales tax documents for you to review. I don't know if anyone had any questions, but I do have another um, update regarding the Wisconsin Help for Homeowners program that is currently in operation. And so that information, we, we have received funds um, from taxpayers and the information is posted on the website. Um, I have communicated this with some of our lending institutions. I spoke to Mr. Sleater and we do have flyers out too. So hopefully we can get the information out to the public. What's that called again, please? It's the Wisconsin Help for Homeowners. Help for Homeowners, okay. Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, Janine, what are the qualifications for citizens to apply for that? Is there like income guidelines or something? There, you know what, there are specifics, Mr. Schumann. Um, I have information. We are guided um, basically as the treasurers to pass out the website information and the, the, and the telephone number um, because there are individuals there that can answer all the specifics. 
Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions for our county treasurer? Anything else you'd like to add, Jane? That's all I have. All right. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Number nine, opioid settlements update. Janine, are you still on for this? Sorry. I'm here, yes. Okay. So with the opioid settlement, um, we have to establish a separate bank account specific to those funds. So this is starting the approval process for the county to establish a new bank account. Uh, just wondering though, with the timing of this between you know a new board, you know, what do we know when the funds are coming in? We do not. They, if, I mean, if this waited a month, that would be fine. We will not have the funds in a month's time. But uh, I, I don't know, Janine, if you've even got paperwork, you probably need to know who's the chair where you can do paperwork with the bank on that. Uh, yes, I don't, I haven't had any documents, um, but I will need that information, correct? Do we know if there's more money? No. There's a webinar at the end of the month um, where they're going to start talking about timing and hopefully. So should we just defer that until next month? Um, Janine, are you okay with that? That's fine. That's fine. The, the more information I have, the better. Yes. Mr. Chairman, Mike, did we hear in Health and Human Services that there was possibly a separate pot of fund for opioid money? Was that what public health nurse was talking about? Um, yeah, so um, the county signed a resolution, all of the counties in the state agreeing that Wisconsin's allocation would be split 70% to the counties, 30% to the state. And what uh, Julia was telling us is that 30% that goes to the state, the state is going to redistribute that amount back to the counties as grants for different programs. And so she was talking about that 30% allocation. Yeah. So do you want a motion to defer this for a month? Uh, where do we go with it? I think if we just, if we're gonna defer, we just don't make a motion, we just wait and put on an agenda for next month. Okay. So, we'll move on to number 10. Resolution to hold, carry over funds, Sheriff's Department. Yeah, the Sheriff made some purchases uh, during 2021, they were hoping to receive them in 2021 and run it through the 2021 budget. Um, the state of the economy, they weren't able to get the items in, and so they're requesting to carry over money uh, to pay for those items when they come into the year. Uh, I know we approve that. I'll second that. Motion by Mr. Duffy, second by Ms. Bessel to approve. Question How much funds are we talking about? Uh, it was like 13,000, isn't there a resolution? 13,922. Thank you. Yeah. Any discussion? Hearing that all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Number 11, 2021 preliminary financial status. Okay, so the first two pages are an overview of the general fund revenue and expenses for 2021. Um, the column on the very far right is the 2020 numbers. Fourth column in that's labeled year to date transactions, those are the 2021 numbers. So overall, for the general fund, we're showing an excess for the year of. 3,067,000 and that compares the year prior the excess was almost 1.5 million so we increased 1.5 million in 2021 21 was just a really good year for the general fund sales tax was up timber proceeds were up got a couple of grant or up. COVID grants that are in there. So just a really good year 
uh, for the general fund. Yes. Okay, question for Mike. Yes. Mike, so um, the rationale for this was revenue was up in several different areas. And what about expenses? Were they Did they remain the same or did we? So expenses actually were down a little bit from the year prior. They were probably down 100,000 from the year prior, uh, which makes sense also because people weren't traveling as much. I'm just going to say that. Going to what about working from home? Did that have any impact really or not? Um, I wouldn't say significantly okay. on, on the expense side. I, I don't think that impacted too much. I'll have to think about that. And then with Janine's sales tax report, she just gave us for 22 thus far. Are we tracking right with 21? I mean, are we looking at pretty close a year again? No, pretty pretty close. We might be down a little bit from a year ago. A year ago was just a really strong year. I know. Um, and I think we're maybe down a little bit from last year, but. All right, so that's good news for the general fund. The next two reports pages are overview of the health and human services department. Uh, kind of jumping to the bottom of uh, their report, page five of the health and human services report. So right now their deficit for all their programs for the year is 187,000. Uh, that compares to a deficit of the year prior of 732,000. So the deficit uh, is much smaller for this year, for 2021, which is good. We were anticipating because of the out of county placements that we were gonna be in the similar situation as we were the year prior. Um, I think for, uh, for some of the reasons you know, they're struggling when there's staff turnover to get new staff on quickly. So they have positions that are vacant for several months. So that on the budget side, that helps, you know, save some money. So, because uh, they still incur the placement costs, but we are able to save in other ways. And a lot of it is with the staff. How many do we have at Lincoln Hills now? Been through for a while. I don't know. If it's still oh, well, at Mendota, Winnebago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's there's one in particular that's a long term person. There's there's other people that are in and out of the program throughout the year. But there's one there that right now that's um, on a full time basis. Yes, I really appreciate our finance committee looking at health and human services deficits because that seems to be one of our biggest. Budget busters, I've always said it, you know, those out of county placements. Yeah. So the, the concern was, um, you know, the, the fund balance for health and human services going into this year was a little over 300,000. We were concerned that if they had another deficit like they had the year prior, that we were going to have to transfer from the general fund to cover that deficit. Fortunately, for 2021, we're not going to have to make a transfer to cover the deficit. So. Is that department run efficiently? Uh, I think every year is that freaking problem, and it seems to get worse. Well, I think you know, the, the, for the most part, the programs hold their own. It's these other county placements that they have no control of. You know, the, the judicial system assigns people to these facilities, and yeah, yeah other than that, we're, has, we're satisfied. Yeah, with the, the other programs are holding their own. They're, you know, it's just placements for the most part that are difficult okay. from a budget perspective. Mike did, thank you, Chairman. Mike, didn't Tom tell us though that these out of county placements that were court ordered, you could borrow money for? You can. I know we've never gone down, we borrowed money, yes. right? For capital projects, but, but- We haven't gone down this road. Right, because we're able to supplement, right? With the, yeah. with the resource fund. Yeah. So. Assuming these placements remain in place, um, the anticipation is we're going to have to, from the general fund, supplement them each year to cover these out of county placement costs. And that's why the general fund, it's so important this year that we had that excess because we're building that up, anticipating that this is coming. Uh, hopefully, you know, they're, they're working with uh, 
uh, legislators. We've had discussions with Andy Phillips, who's very involved with WCA. He's talking with WCA. Uh, so they're kind of trying to get a state approach from all counties to put something together to take to the legislators to get to get the guidelines changed, the funding changed at state level. But that's a learned long-term solution. That's you know, that's several years down the road before you see something like that. Yeah. Well, aren't all our count out of county placements, aren't they those all court ordered? They are court ordered, yes. So we could vote on them if we wanted to. Yeah. Right. I don't know whether that helps us at all, but I know. It puts it outside the levy. You have to remember yeah. when you go vote why it's not getting changed. Right. And Mr. Chairman, one other thing we heard that um, Winnebago is run by the state, correct, right, Mike? Yes. And they're actually making a profit off the backs of counties and our placement there. That has been a major issue. We brought it up at our legislative updates several times. So I think you're right, Mike. I think they're looking at something. Either building more facilities, more regionally located, that might be able to help us and somehow fund it, not just by a county that has these people come here and be court ordered to a facility. Will they build above Highway 64? Mm -hmm. And we're not the only county in this situation. So that's why there's the power of the WCA organizations to, to go to the state with our concerns on this. Uh, highway, uh, we're just going through doing the closing there, so I don't have a number for you that's on the highway. I know the highway is shorthanded since JD left. We're uh, working through it. Yeah. Okay, any questions, concerns? If not, we'll move on to number 12, finance director update, please. Yeah, so I just spoke with Rose. Um, we do have a candidate who has accepted the county's offer, but they're still working through whatever they're doing to, to, to finalize it. So it's not final yet. I can't share who it is with you yet. Um, when we interviewed the individual, um, he indicated he would like to start maybe around July 1st. Um, and that, and I'm planning to leave in the middle of May. So there is going to be a gap in time there uh, where the position is vacant. However, Rose has spoken with him and he said he can come in for a few days before I leave. So we have some discussions on what this job entails and what he needs to do. Get familiar with the computer system. He's currently a finance director at a school district, so he's familiar with grant accounting. Their, their books are similar to ours. They got a different set of rules, but uh, the accounting is similar. So that should be good. So part, of, so part of my plan, um, the auditors are scheduled to be here um, mid-June to start the field work for the audit. I will have most of the work papers complete by the time I leave, and I will forward them to the auditors. So they'll have most of what they need. They can, do, they can start their work before the new person gets here. Yes. Mike, do you have a hard stop middle of May or are you I, negotiable? Because we did talk about we would really like an overlap with this new finance director with you. I mean, you do a lot here. Is this yeah. guy equal to you? Well, he's not familiar with county. <sighs> um. Guidelines. And, so he's He's going to have to learn the county side of things, certainly. Um, Chairman Kinsley, this is Miss Pettit. We don't have a raise button on the Zoom for today. So I'm just, my thinking is here, is there any way when negotiating his contract that uh, he comes in a couple days or 
Zooms with you a couple days a week now in the afternoons or something to get to get familiar with the position because there's no way you can leave that gap from May to July. Um, and how would he come in if there is no formal train on, training and he's not familiar with the county versus the school board? That was, is my main concern. Thank you for your concerns. We are addressing that behind the scenes, trying to work through that. And there's more information that we can't share at this time, but thank you. Thanks, Mr. Kinsley. Yeah. And there's a network of people in the area that are going to be more than willing to help him out when I'm not wrong. Here's a question that I assume that, uh, like an example, administrators, all administrators kind of communicate periodically. I don't know if you want to call them, they have a meeting once a month or so. Do the accountants have the same thing, perhaps? They do, but it's quarterly. Okay. But any one of them in that group is more than willing to sit down, come up, if they need to sit down for half a day, go through things. It's good for the people. Good. And that's helpful too. Yes, thank you. Mike, I didn't hear an answer to Tweet's question. Are you are you firm on that date or are you willing to well I don't know. I haven't I, I did I did just recently tell Rose that it was going to be May 19th. I don't know. I haven't really thought about that. Leave him alone, let him live. <laughs> he said that. Leave him. <laughs> He's done a wonderful job for us. He really has. Yes. I guess that's why we're begging yes, him to stay. Yes. I just wonder whether a new guy is going to be over his head. Yeah. And, and I, uh, I don't know. What would you guess the learning curve is going to be? How, uh, well, he's certainly going to have a learning curve. Um, I mean, he knows accounting. He's, he's probably, I'm going to guess, 10 or 15 years younger than me. So he's, he's been around for a while. He's probably got 20 years in school district finance director position uh, in his background. Um, I, 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 there's going to be a learning curve, but I, I think the timing, the time of year that this is happening is going to be good too, because there's not a lot of deadlines right now that he's got to hit other than working with the auditors. Um, you know, it's the start of budget season, but at that point, um, July, if he's here in July, by the end of July, departments will turn the budgets in. They'll have to start compiling the budgets and getting reports out on where those are kind of headed, budget requests. Yes. Hello, thank you, Chairman. Has our new county administrator met and kind of agree with this gentleman? He was part of the interviews. Okay. Um, and he, I mean, it's the only candidate we interviewed, and it's uh, really the only resume we received on the position. Thankfully, it worked out. But our new Andy feels confident with him? Yeah. Alvarado? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Tom, there's always going to be a learning curve no matter who you bring in. It's just how fast they pick up on it. This guy seems like he's he can be able to handle it. Or we wouldn't have picked him. Okay. Cross our fingers. Well, it is with any new hire. <laughs> yeah. you know, and I thank Ms. Pettit for her contribution, but yeah. we're trying to do the best we can move forward, and that's what we'll do. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think we all share the concern of Ms. Pettit. You know that this person work out, and yeah. there be some overlap. You know, might be. Yeah, yeah. I, I would prefer that. So sure. Okay. We're good. Let's move on to number. Is what did Mrs. Zilmer want? Something about the audit report. Well, I think she was concerned with how we were going to address that. Um, like I said, I'm planning to have all the paperwork done, and then I send the files to the auditors. Number 13, ARPA funds update Civil Air Patrol ARPA fund requests. So, okay, I guess. Yeah, so this is Alan Feckler. Alan I is. Stand up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I read this in a paper and wanted to get our name in. 
don't know if some of you are familiar with civil air patrol or not. Our big emphasis is we work with kids. We don't economically discriminate uh, for their opportunities. So we fund their scholarships and their events and all those sorts of things, whatever, whatever the funds we raise. So we're limited to that extent. We're also subject to, under COVID, we were subject not only to the county and the state, but since we're an auxiliary of the Air Force, we're under federal rules. So we were basically shut down almost for two years, um, where we were not allowed to have public fundraising. We, we could do is letter solicitation, and that's not a high percentage payoff. So when I read that, I said I would apply. Um, we normally have a big event, which we're going to have this year, God willing, <clears throat> in July. It's a little hard to hold a pancake fundraiser with six foot distancing and all that. So it is a, doesn't merit even attempting to do it. But that event usually gets us the expense money that we need for the year. Um, we've done, we've been extremely frugal. In fact, some members are holding bills because they paid it in lieu of the group. <clears throat> which is done in every group. No, no, we're not that. We just have a facility at the airport. You're welcome to see it. It's available to the community. All our work is done in the community for the community. Um, and basically, we're looking trying to reimburse what we have its fixed expense. So it's about twenty-five to three thousand a year, depending on the year, which is about what we net from the pancake fee. So that just takes care. Of. We have shut down internet, shut down phone because the startup costs would be less than carrying those bills. Uh, big inconvenience, but we'll manage. We're back to live meetings as of uh, February again, where the Air Force dictates when we can have those, and we have to follow the rules. The uh, only thing I'll say about our unit is we held them together. Still have eight kids, which is, when you're down to Zoom meetings, yeah. it's not very entertaining. I can't compete with video games and everything else. So. But it is still an ongoing concern and we, I submitted paperwork, we'll kind of recap that in that. Um, but it would seem that we're one of the ones that are impacted by that as well as all other organizations. Right. Well, I think they do an absolutely wonderful job out there with them youth and it's important to have them youth broaden their horizons and continue to learn in different areas. But I think this is something that should just move right onto the full board, let the full board decide. Because I think at the last couple of full board meetings, we've talked about ARPA funds and putting together an ad hoc committee. And it keeps coming back that, you know, this is something the whole board should deal with. So I think that's where it should go. Yes. Mike, how much ARPA funds do we have left? Um, I know I ask you this a lot. It's, you know, about 1.5 million. Um, should be getting an allocation in May. We should be getting that second payment. So, and that's what it'll be about 1.5, 1.6. Uh, the one thing, though, I was not clear on what the amount was you were asking. And again, I didn't know if there were parameters. We got about a fixed budget about three thousand a year. So I put that number at seventy-five hundred dollars, which would replenish. Everything that's been spent um, going forward. If again, if we can have our normal range of things, we we manage. But it's just that we've exhausted everything we've got. I think be different. I think you have to have a roadmap of some kind. But I don't know that. And I guess if people are against the ad hoc committees, but I think some committee has to start with us. And, and perhaps finance is where it should start. And after the new committee is appointed, maybe the, the new chairman can say, one of the agendas is at least starts somewhere, rather than start with a whole board, which would just gotta be a circus to, to get anything done. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe a circus either way, but a, a, a smaller circus. <laughs> But anyway, I, I'm not against the request. If these are, they do a great work out there, but I guess somehow we got to sit down and say, what's what's the end game here? Uh, so I, I I like what your idea is. We delay it till next at least next month, and but I think the next going forward, if we can't go with an ad hoc committee, then we get some committee to say you, it starts with you, and move it down the chain. I'm not sure if it was Miss Hassel or Miss Pettit. Yes, something. I I had a question. Um. Yeah. So. 
so uh, while I have, this is, I, is a thing I support, it is very much something I support. I'm wondering if the Air Force gives you their ARPA funds. How, are you not getting any ARPA funds from anybody else, Al? No, I, I looked at that. There is no funding for individual units with totally locally supported. Nothing from the Air Force, nothing from Civil Air Patrol, nothing from uh, state. Okay, and then the second question is the county, um, if we agree to this, are we opening a can of worms? You know, are we promoting then all organizations that were impacted? You know, how are we setting Civil Air Patrol apart from any other organization that might be requesting funds to get back on their feet because they had to cancel fundraisers? So, you know, Rotary, Lions, all of those are great um, efforts. And are they going to be coming to us then? So I just want to keep that in mind that once we approve for one, we might be um, having to approve for all. So while it's a great event, I want to make sure it's uh, something that we can um, supply to everybody, not just to one group. Thank you, Ms. Hessel. Ms. Bennett, do you have anything to add? Nope, I'm on the same wavelength as Stacy. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Thank you. Mr. Yeah, and I'm right with those two ladies, but we've kind of already opened the door <laughs> with Senior Resource Center and what we did for the Sheriff's Department. I mean, this, what Al is asking for is actually, uh, his deficit is a response from, you know, COVID and, and that's, I'm sure, falls right under ARPA funds, huh, Mike? But it's true. I mean, we have to be careful, and I agree with Mr. Duffy. Have a roadmap on how we're going to use this money, but yeah, that would be an excellent use. Of it. Mr. Feckler, do you just do you just have students that are from Sawyer County, or are they from other counties as well? We get them from all over. Right now, we've got uh, one that comes down from Drummond. Uh, we've had them come from Cumberland. We've had them come from, you know, we don't restrict that Washburn County in that. Um, not a great deal. Most of them are in so and here. So, will you be asking the other counties for funds, or just Sawyer County? I haven't gone to other counties. Um, okay. It's a good starting point. Yep. Very. Good. <clears throat> I will pursue it, but I doubt. You know, I don't know, but we'll we'll certainly make we make it requests everywhere just because we've got to get it started back up. I do want to suggest too is that. As a resource, it's a county resource. Um, what we put out the airport is is for county use. So we're going to uh, there's an event out at the airport in May for emergency response to the airport. But the facility we built isn't ours necessarily. It's our communities, and also the services CAP provides or brings a link to is an emergency services. Uh, it's a tremendous asset. You get it anyways, but it takes longer. Um, it's just one of those things that, of course, my passion is 45 years old, so I, I could stand here all day long and tell you about it. I do understand what, what the approach is and what people are saying. I get that. But years past, the county used to fund us, and then we worked to try to just become independent of that. Thank you for all that you do, Al. What's so what is, I guess my question is, so are, what is the exact amount like uh, Mike had asked for? Are you looking for 5,000? Are you looking for 7,000? Are you looking for in between? Are you willing to take maybe less, half, three, and maybe go to one of the other counties like Washburn or uh, Drummond and see if they, they would uh, give anything? You know, if I'm given an option, I'll take the max. But, I, I you know, 5,000 of... 6,000 is going to replace or fully replace our deficit. Um, don't know what where to start in the other counties, but I certainly will approach it. I, you know, it's harder to do that because there's one kid and, and it's really not a major part of our program. They just happen on us. Um, and I certainly will make the attempt. We're also making the attempt to LCO and folks like that because we have a lot of kids from that area as well. I'll make the motion, Mr. Chairman, to pass it to the full county board for $5,000. Okay. 
So we have a motion by Ms. Pettit to approve and go to the full board for $5,000. I'll second that. Second by Ms. Nessel. Any other discussion? Hearing it all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. So it'll be discussed at the county board. We'll have to have it on the agenda for the county board. Okay. Yes. Okay. Anything else regarding the ARPA funds? Hearing none, we'll go to number 14, future agenda items. So there's ARPA funds should be on the future agenda items. I think it should be on every month. <laughs> Opioid who's, who's, a, who's making the decision? How do we start with the thing, Mr. Chairman? This is the problem. I guess put it on the agenda is wonderful, but is, is this the committee that's going to start with something? Well, or? this is finance, and that's where the money comes into finance. It's a starting point. Whether it stays here or goes somewhere else or stays at the right. full board, I don't know. At least we can start it here. Yeah. Or, or the, new, the new committee can start it. Whoever yeah. the new committee is, you know, yes. a stepping stone. If we have it on the agenda, they'll have to look at it and they can decide whether they want to do something yeah, with yeah. it. Or, that's, yeah. You know, it's all good process. It's a learning right. process and we'll see where it goes. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be in favor of that too. All our requests come through finance yeah. and then go to the full board. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was my understanding that administrative, this administration committee was supposed to make up a priorities list. So that would be helpful if you would present that to the finance as well. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Number 15, correspondence reports, conference meetings. Anybody have anything? I'd like to thank Ms. Pettit for serving time on the county board. Much appreciated. And thank you. Good luck. Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, on, on future agenda items, we talked about the carbon tax. That's got to start somewhere. And, yes. and maybe the new committee can at least start to talk about that. Is that something that's going to be? It probably should be on the agenda for me. I know we talked a little bit about it last night of public works because public works covers the lands. I mean, on Dale Olson to get his opinion because this is last, was last yeah. meeting and I think he was pretty, had a lot of information regarding it. He should. It's going to come back. Land, to water, forestry is a lot of discussion yeah. on that. So I guess they decide what, what's, what committee should that start with? Well, well it's, it's in the land, water committee. Land, water. They're, okay. They're, they've had, it's coming back in May for further discussion. For them, well, good, wonderful. And, and didn't we schedule a presentation for the full county board, what forestry heard? Yeah, we're going to. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. The uh, chairman also, uh, the economic development we talked about uh, from um, extension department, uh, a, a program on grant writing is available free. And um, I guess everybody needs money. And there's a lot of grants out there that aren't applied for. I think we should encourage every department to send somebody there to learn how to write grants. If there's money out there that's not being asked for, uh, shame on us, you know. So that's a good point. And I've thought about that a lot. And I know Mr. Schumann's brought it up. And I might be misspeaking, but I think it's LCO has grant writers out there. We do and, a whole grant department. Okay, which is great. Can we afford that? I don't know, but. I know in the past, the department heads were kind of supposed, or they did, or used to kind of watch through their department if there was grants out there that would fit their needs. So if there's training, absolutely, we should have someone there training. Who, who has time? I don't know, but it, it should be done. How much, without disclosing this, anything confidential, what, what does the tribe get? Um, they have, how many grant writers do they have? Or they're all busy. They live and breathe that grants. Yeah, I, I guess the question is, can we afford it? Can we afford not to have it? But, yeah, that's the other so, side. And I guess the question, um, I mean, even if you have to assign that responsibility to some department and say, all right, find somebody, we have to hire them. Um, I, I, I don't know. Maybe we'll have to get a grant so we can hire them. <laughs> so what do, what do we do with it? I guess is the question. We... <laughs> well, it's one of those things that um, I have on my list when Andy gets here. These are the things you're going to have to look into. 
and that's on the list. Okay, maybe we can put it on our agenda, also future items, just to see what's where it's going. What is that training? It's in the summer, sometime. Oh, great. So it's I, don't, I don't have that form. UW Extension provides that training a couple times a year, anyway. But yeah, I mean, you can never learn enough when it comes to something like that. Good idea. Are these people full time grant writers? Yes. Yeah. 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 We should do it. And they're in different, um, part, I mean, not departments, but areas, different special education and yeah. things like that. Yeah, we should and do that. Infrastructure yeah. for the person to read. I'm oh, sorry, Mr. Schumann. Uh, when Mr. Bissonette Brian sat on here, we discussed this. Do you remember trying to work with uh, uh, the the tribe? This was about two years ago when I first started for grant writing, and then we were looking at. We discussed that there are many college students that could provide internships and possibly do that too as an internship to the county. There are many college students that can grant write, and that's what they're they're looking at. at they're doing in college where we could do that and the tribe could also work with the county and um, make sure that we're doing it correctly. But there are many students, uh, there are a couple that actually work for the county that would be great in the situation that we're working with HHS. Um, Jason Nucky was one of them, Mr. Kinsley, and he's, you know, gonna, um, he's coming back. It's one of the success stories as well as my daughter, their archeology span anthropology uh, majors graduating. Jason's going to be a uh, full on uh, uh, major, I forget what his is, but it, uh, for he's in the medical field. So he internshiped at the county and that's what I proposed then too, is looking at that if Mr. Schumann remembers. I think Mr. Duffy was also on the board, Mike was there, but we talked about it with Brian, trying to get something going. So we had something. Thank you for oh, sharing. Right. And I do remember that, Ms. Pettit. Yep, exactly. And when you write when you write grants and they're collaborative between, you know, tribe and county and state or that area, they're much more successful. Yeah. That's what they look like. They have a higher rate, higher rate of success when you involve all the so, so we should really kind of plan to do something, not just talk yeah, about no, it. Oh, that's a great idea. Yes. And then Mike, are we looking at how are we going to fund that $2 million overage we had on the courthouse? Is that on an agenda item in the near future? Or how are we going to find um, it? Well, it, it can be on the agenda in the near future. Um, you have some time, but you know your options are to borrow for it. If you want to apply some ARPA to it, you know, there's other funding, you know, carbon credits, but that's down the road, so you can't really rely on that right now. That will be certainly part of the budget process that discussion will come up. Yeah. Again, I think I'm going to put my two cents in. I, I, I know I'm no, no longer, if this is my last meeting for the full for my county position, but I would be totally against ARPA funds being used for that courthouse. Um, there are many, many other uses for within the community for those ARPA funds. And I can tell you right now, if you try to use ARPA funds on that, you're gonna have pushback on that because Health and Human Services, there is such a deficit within, with the opiates and Tweed understands how six, uh, six Menominee uh, individuals uh, passed away, correct? We tweeted last weekend due to opiates. Yeah. yeah, I listened to Lorraine's report at Health and Human Services. That that sounds yeah. correct. So this is the issue. You're, you try to use ARPA funds on that, and there's many, many other things that they could go for with on, within Health and Human Services. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you, everyone. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Don. Let's